All right, so do you want to say where in Chicago you're from? Yeah, sorry. So um, I, am, uh, I live in South Shore, and I am at the conference in two capacities. One is as a worker owner for South Shore Bicycle Works, which is a bicycle uh, co-op, worker owner co-op. And the other is I am a bookkeeper and am launching uh, a bookkeeping business focusing on uh, worker co-ops. Nice. Did you want to, does the bookkeeping uh, business have a name yet or how does it? Jay Hendricks Bookkeeping. Nice. <laughs> nice. <Keeping it> simple. <laughs> um, and so what's your, what's your uh, role in, in these co-ops or these efforts? So the bookkeeping freelancing idea is, my fantasy was that I had it launched and I would be networking at this event, but I'm about a month behind, so I haven't quite launched it. The original idea was that I would be a freelancer, um, you know, like 1099 uh, for folks, but I just learned while I'm here that there is in fact a freelancing cooperative, and that appealed to me very much. Um, because I understand as a bookkeeper, um, people often start their business because they want to do the work that they're there to do. Um, and if it's a great, if it's a going concern, they're making money, um, but they don't necessarily want to spend as much time getting the books right as they know they need to have the books right to run their business. And so that's similar for a bookkeeper. Um, I can certainly keep my own books, um, but chasing clients about payment, um, things like that. Um, and then it's like, oh, that's where, as a freelancer, working with other freelancers um, gets my attention. Um, so one of the things that I'm really excited about with this meeting is completely new ideas. People have, have identified cooperative solutions to ideas that I hadn't even really thought about. Um, wearing my worker owner hat for the bicycle co-op um, yesterday was the big day for me um, the chicago worker co-op thing as in they literally referred to it as that um, event was really great because it moved between um, it was very peer driven um, and being able to talk with other people who are so a lot of the most useful conversations I had were with other people who were at similar stages to uh, us in starting our co-op because everybody is tripping over the same obstacles and challenges and it's very encouraging to hear oh we're not making we are making mistakes but these are common challenges and there are solutions to these challenges Nice, yeah, it's a Gilded Co-op. I'm going to try to put a picture of the business card um, that they gave me. Um, I feel like you answered part of this, but in case you have anything else to say, um, what, why did you come to the conference? Um, I came to the conference uh, first and foremost to network as a bookkeeper um, because I am not like... I know how to do bookkeeping. I have not run my own bookkeeping freelance business. And so I wanted to meet other people that were financial professionals around co-ops um, to start conversations with them about um, community of practice. 80% um, of bookkeeping is the same thing every time. And then there's 20% where that's questions that make your brain bend. And it's really great to talk to other people who have also dealt with exactly the same or similar uh, questions to talk through. So to literally meet people face to face who are not always in Chicago um, and start building that community of practice. But then also um, starting out an important, a useful source of getting clients is referrals from someone else who can not just be like, oh, here's this person that can do it, but then also is pointing clients at me so that the client has a positive experience also. Um, not necessarily like, oh, here's just this thing and then I don't have a whole lot of experience and everybody's miserable versus, oh, they just need their books set up. It's a very basic sort of thing. That person, the other bookkeeper, full up on clients, doesn't have the capacity to do it, but it's a very straightforward routine thing and here you go. Pass them on and everybody can have a positive experience.
how did you get to the conference? Um, I'm a member of a bike co-op. It is early, uh, mid-September, I guess at this point. I rode my bike, um, which meant I arrived sweaty. Yesterday, I just was kind of gross and sweaty all day. Today, I uh, had a different outfit and changed in the men's room, so I was feeling a little less sweaty um, for the trip, for the day. Is this your first worker co-op or co-op conference? Yes. All right. Um, so far, what has helped uh, your, your co-op efforts the most? Um, what has been most helpful for cooperative, uh, I guess, cooperative efforts, I think, is learning about how people do co-ops. Um, I grew up being aware of food co-ops. Um, I had an experience with housing co-ops that was not particularly good. Um, but it was being around people um, like my interviewer who, you know, helped me learn more about the potential for cooperatives as a transformative solution to structural situations that are just grinding up many of us. Um, so uh, the conference setting is a little bit unusual for me. I'm not used to having this many people in one space, um, but it's been really great to have access to all of the different things that people are doing um, just as an educational process. What's something unexpected, unexpected that's helped your co-op efforts? I guess the extent to which being involved in cooperatives is not about running a bit worker cooperatives is not just about running a business. Um, but the cooperative principles are a um, countercultural movement in the U.S. So appreciating the extent to which you have to uh, move beyond. It's not just can you run your business. Um, because I feel like both with the bike co-op and my senses with the bookkeeping work is that finding clients, getting cash flow going, is not the big challenge. Um, the big challenge is these cooperative principles that um, are not what we're taught about um, very much. Where do you go locally for assistance? That's actually a conversation that has been emerging this weekend. It started yesterday where there was a, you know, a day that you could spend with people from Chicago who are trying to do worker co-ops, are doing worker co-ops. Um, I'm very interested in cultivating a peer-to-peer -peer network um, and have had a couple uh, or a series of conversations with a couple of people um, who one of them I've known from before this event, um, another I met at this event about like how we can support each other um, where we're at. Um, but then also I feel like Chicago is really blessed with um, co-op incubator resources. Some of them I was aware of before today, some of them I've only encountered at this conference, um, but uh, so like in South Shore, um, Mike Strode has very, has a lot, and Koala Nut Collaborative. <laughs> if I'm on camera, I want to say the name right, but um, he is very active literally in that neighborhood. Um, but there are also other um, incubator resources. Um, Upside Down Consulting now has a umbrella thing that I can't remember the name of. Um, and I know, I'm gonna fumble it. They're Pilsen based, uh, that's the worker center. There's cooperative worker organization in Pilsen. Um, somebody who was there working as an incubator literally has it gave me the phrase that has been very grounding and orienting for me in terms of being as a worker co op, which was choose your hard. Um, so uh, that doesn't make building a worker co op any less challenging, but I'm actually feeling very beautiful resourced with people who have expertise around um, not just other worker co-ops but have thought a lot about and have good uh, support systems for starting worker co-ops. What's something you wish your co-op efforts had to, su uh, to support you? Capital. 
<laughs> like, uh, we really, our biggest challenge has been that we are ready to go do things, but we don't have, um, I've hit the point where I literally, when I get asked this question, I say, South Shore Bicycle Works would love $10,000 so we can all quit our day jobs and focus on building it for three months to pay our, you know, just the tent, just to pay our bills, cover salaries so we can live comfortably to get the co-op going. Um, and there are that, you know, like occasionally you can get that, but, um, often you have to go through a long process, grant application process and lack of clarity um, or it comes in the form of a loan that you immediately have to start paying back um, that then puts pressure. Um, so quite frankly I think if there was you know can we just have a very easy way to throw you know like if you you know do you have a business plan do you have a core group of people do you have some cooperative education program in place to make sure that you are building on that and then here ten thousand dollars use it for whatever you need it um, big enough to make an impact um, but small enough that it's iterative what's been the best or most useful part of the conference so far um, the other people who are here um, conversations that I've had is there anything going on in your efforts that you're proud of or excited for South Shore Bicycle Works uh, one of the well and I've learned at this conference is that um, people have been very impressed how rapidly we went from we have an idea to we have a brick and mortar space where we can actually be um, wrenching on bikes. Um, and that was encouraging because we, you know, this, this stuff is hard. This, this work is hard and we didn't really have a sense of are we taking forever to do things. It took us two months to open a bank account. So we have some things where we're like feeling uh, not particularly competent. We, never occurred to any of us it would take two months to open a bank account. But so then it's interesting to hear like, oh, you in 18 months, you, it took you only 18 months to get into a brick and mortar space um, is also encouraging. So you can look around, see where you're standing and what you're doing well at um, and also, you know, what you need to learn. This is an opportunity for you to shamelessly plug your effort or efforts. Let me plug the bike co-op first, where South Shore Bicycle Works. Um, Chicago is a flat city. Chicago has terrible, terrible car traffic. Getting around on a bicycle is so much easier in your neighborhood than trying to get around in a car, and so many people do it. We're located on the south side of Chicago. Um, Political leaders try to tell us that people in our neighborhoods don't bike, but you just look around and you see people on bicycles. And we threw open the door, our bike, our retail space is literally a shipping container, so we threw open the door of the shipping container. We did not need to advertise, people just started appearing with bicycles. Um, and we're thrilled to have somewhere that they could get their bikes maintained, learn a little bit about maintaining it themselves. Um, and that I think that that's not something people associate with the south side of Chicago, but it's right there and it's wonderful to be part of like making that more visible um, by opening a business that supports that. Um, as far as the bookkeeping, I mean, it's numbers and boxes. It's really not that interesting, but um, I'm excited about uh, conversations with people. I. Um, a hat that I'm not wearing today is as a tenant organizer, where I often help tenants understand what lawyers are telling them and what their options are. And I feel like cooperative practices, um, an opportunity to do that in terms of bookkeeping and finances and not just, here's a bunch of numbers, but rather let's understand what numbers are meaningful for you. And so we can have a conversation about which, what numbers are you wanting to keep track of? Um, so I'm, that's still very new to me, but, um, this conference has gotten me very excited about doing that. And I think I'm going to be good at it. Awesome. Thanks so much.